subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 9th of August. India's weather office issues red alert for rainfall in several districts of Western Maharashtra state. Former Chief Minister of Gilgit Baltistan demands security strict action after sectarian violence in the region. And a year after Taliban's return, some women fight for lost freedoms. And now for all the details. Heavy rainfall coupled with strong winds lashed India's financial capital Mumbai on Tuesday morning, inundating several low-lying areas of the city. Various parts of western Maharashtra state, including Mumbai, have been witnessing heavy rain since Sunday and the intensity increased early Tuesday morning with strong winds. High tides were also seen hitting Mumbai's marine drive amid rainfall. India's weather office on Tuesday issued a red alert for North Konkan, North Central Maharashtra, East and West Vidarbha, forecasting heavy to very heavy rainfall in the regions. Relief is likely after August 12th, it said. Bijapur district in India's central Chhattisgarh state also witnessed heavy rains with thunder causing flood-like situation in many low-lying areas and swelling of rivers. Displaced by floods, hundreds of people living in makeshift camps in Balochistan province of Pakistan are fretting about their future. The impoverished Balochistan has been hit the hardest due to flash floods caused by abnormally heavy monsoon rains that have killed more than 540 people across Pakistan over the past month. Flood evacuees living in a makeshift encampment in Bela in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province are fretting about their future. The camp houses around 25 families displaced by the recent floods in the region. Flash floods caused by abnormally heavy monsoon rains have killed at least 549 people in Pakistan over the past month, with remote communities in the impoverished Balochistan among the hardest hit. Although this batch of evacuees has reached relative safety, they worry about facing similar devastation in the near future in a world in which their homes are increasingly vulnerable to changing weather patterns. और कुछ भी नहीं बचा बच्चे बचा हुआ ही अल्लाह का करम है शुक्र है और अल्लाह ही अल्लाह गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज एंड द आर्मी हैव सेट अप एड एंड रिलीफ कैंप्स इन फ्लडेड रीजंस एंड हैव बीन वर्किंग टू हेल्प रीलोकेट फैमिलीज एंड प्रोवाइड फूड एंड मेडिसिन ओका में बाला से अपील की है कि हमें कोई ऐसा इंतजाम किया जाए एक ऐसी सर्विस की जाए कि आइंदा आने वाले वक्त में जो है इस तरह के सीन ना हो जिस तरह की क्योंकि इससे पहले किसी के ज़हन में नहीं था और किस तरह कोई कोई प्लानिंग्स नहीं थी जिस वजह से काफ़ी नुकसान जो हुए हैं The past month was the wettest in Pakistan in three decades, with 133% more rain than the average for the past 30 years. Balochistan, which borders Iran and Afghanistan, received 305% more rain than the annual average, the National Disaster Management Authority said. Moving on. Former Chief Minister of Gilgit Baltistan, Hafiz Hafiz Ur Rahman, has demanded strict action against perpetrators of recent sectarian violence in the region in which two people were killed. Locals and activists blame there has been a major escalation of sectarian tensions because of Islamabad's encouragement furthering its divide and rule policy in the illegally occupied territory. Former Chief Minister of Gilgit Baltistan, Hafiz Hafiz Ur Rahman, has demanded a strict action against those involved in creating sectarian tensions in the illegally occupied region. Two men belonging to the Shia Muslim community were killed in alleged firing recently when two groups clashed at Yadgar Chowk while a religious ceremony was underway. <laughs> 
Rahman holding a press conference said that display of weapons should be banned in the region. He also urged the Pakistan government to ensure the security of religious leaders in the wake of the incident. कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं कि जो वेपन्स की शो ऑफ वेपन को प्रमोट करते हैं और नौजवानों के उस जज्बे को वो इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो आप अगर कानून के दो रोए रखेंगे गरीब के लिए और अमीर के लिए और ताकतवर के लिए और कमज़ोर के लिए कुछ और तो नहीं होगा तो लिहाजा हमारा ये मुतालबा है कि जो कोई भी है उसको सिक्योरिटी चाहिए तो गवर्नमेंट मुहैया करे Rahman also demanded that families of those who have lost their lives in such incidents should be given financial assistance. Locals and political activists blame that there has been a major escalation of sectarian violence because of Islamabad's encouragement to fundamentalist Sunni groups furthering its divide and rule policy. In news from Afghanistan, a senior Pakistani militant Omar Khalid Khurasani with 3 million dollar US bounty on his head was killed along with his three aides in an explosion while traveling in a car in Afghanistan's Pakhtia province on Sunday. Reports suggested However, it was not clear who was behind the attack. Asanullah Asan, a militant commander, also confirmed the death on Twitter. This could deal a blow to nascent peace talks between Pakistan's Taliban, known as the TTP, the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan, and the Pakistani government, after meetings facilitated by the Afghan Taliban rulers in Kabul. This comes just a week after the United States said it killed Al Qaeda leader Ayman Al Zawahiri in a drone strike in Kabul. Khurasani was the chief of Jamaat Ul Ahar, a TTP branch which for some years also worked with the Islamic State. His group has claimed responsibility for multiple attacks against police, military, minority Shiite Muslims and Christians, which killed hundreds of people in Pakistan. The Taliban has imposed several restrictions on girls and women one of the most detrimental of which is the ban of education for girls since coming to power in Afghanistan one year after takeover some women are continuing to fight for the lost freedoms Monisa Mubaris is not going to give up the right she and other afghan women won during 20 years of western backed rule easily Before the hardline Islamist Taliban movement swept back to power a year ago, the 31-year-old served as a director of policy monitoring at the finance ministry. Now Mubaris has no job after the Taliban's strict interpretation of Islamic law severely limited women's ability to work, required them to dress and act conservatively, and close secondary schools to girls across the country. Mubaris took part in several protests that broke out, determined to protect her hard-fought rights. قد خواست ما عدالت است آزادی است برابری است شعار ما را برای هم اگر رسانه‌های محترم معلوم است که نان کار و آزادی است که هر کدام از این بسترهای مختلفی از حق و سهم شهروندی را در بر دارد The Taliban's treatment of girls and women is one of the main reasons why the international community refuses to recognize Afghanistan's new rulers cutting off billions of dollars in aid and exacerbating an economic crisis Afghanistan remains the only country in the world where girls are banned from going to high school. In March, the group announced that female secondary schools would reopen, only to reverse its decision on the very morning that many girls had turned up excitedly for school. Some have managed to enroll for private tutorials or online classes to continue the education. Inshallah, shayad umeedai mazyood ast, shayad maktabay mubash va agar boz nashe diga. Tak es The international community continues to advocate for female rights and leadership roles for women in public and political life. Some women said they have had to accept the new norms in order to make ends meet. Gulistan Safari, a former female police officer, was forced to change her career after the Taliban stopped her from entering the police department. 45-year-old Safari now carries out domestic chores for other families in Kabul. Moving on, Sri Lanka said on Monday it has asked China to defer the planned visit of a Chinese ship to the island country after initially approving its arrival this week, yielding to diplomatic pressure from neighboring India to keep the military vessel out. Sri Lanka's foreign ministry in a statement said that one young five was due to arrive on Thursday at the Chinese-built and leased Hambantota port in Sri Lanka's south for five days for replenishment. 
foreign security analyst described the Yuan Wang-5 as one of China's latest generation space tracking ships used to monitor satellite, rocket and intercontinental ballistic missile launches. New Delhi fears its bigger and more powerful rival China will the use Hamban Tota as a military base in India's in backyard. The 1.5 billion US dollar port is near the main shipping route from Asia to Europe. India said late last month it was monitoring the planned visit of the ship, adding that New Delhi would protect its security and economic interest. India also lost a verbal protest with the Sri Lankan government. Sri Lanka formally handed over commercial activities in its main southern port to a Chinese company in 2017 on a 99-year lease after struggling to repay its debt. The port is near the main shipping route from Asia to Europe. Indian athletes received a rousing welcome with beating of drums and cheers by crowds upon their arrival back home on Tuesday after winning a total of 61 medals at the recently concluded Commonwealth Games in the UK. India finished fourth in the medal tally and it was the country's 18th appearance at the Games. Cheers and sounds of drums reverberated across the airport in Indian capital New Delhi on Tuesday as Indian wrestlers and athletes received a warm welcome upon their arrival after a successful campaign at the recently concluded Commonwealth Games in UK's Birmingham city. The Indian contingent registered some historic wins at the event, finishing fourth in the medal tally with 22 gold, 15 silver and 23 bronze medals. Neetu Gangas, who won gold in boxing in the women's 48kg category, said that she'll keep her training and win gold medals for the country. Indian athlete Eldos Paul, who won a historic triple jump gold, said javelin thrower Neeraj Chopra's gold medal in last year's Tokyo Olympics boosted his morale to do well at the Games. वो तो फिर लास्ट ईयर में हमको पता है नीरज चोपड़ा ने गोल्ड लेके आया वो गोल्ड से हमारा पूरे एथलीट्स को वो मेंटेलिटी चेंज कर दिया हम दिमाग में एक लिमिट रखता है हमारे को इतना ही कर सकता है ऐसा नहीं है हम हम कैपेबल इंडियन सॉर्ट कैपेबल ऑफ डूइंग अमेजिंग मैजिक्स इन वर्ल्ड सो हमारा कैपेबिलिटी रिलेज करना है वो तो हार्ड वर्क करना है उसको कीप ब्रेक करना है हमारा लिमिट को Meanwhile, 20-year-old Achinta Shioli, who backed gold in the weightlifting event, was garlanded by supporters at the Kolkata airport. The Commonwealth Games were held from July 28 to August 8. It was India's 18th appearance at the event. Hundreds of Shiite Muslims on Tuesday took part in processions to commemorate Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram, which is observed in memory of the martyrdom of Prophet Muhammad's grandson, Imam Hussain. As part of the rituals, the mourners flocked themselves in an effort to experience the pain endured by Hussain upon his death in a battle nearly 1300 years ago. Thousands of Shiite Muslims on Tuesday took part in procession of India's eastern Kolkata city to observe Ashura, the 10th day of the Islamic holy month of Muharram that marks the death anniversary of Imam Hussain, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad. The morning participants beat themselves with steel-tipped flails and chains in an effort to experience the same pain endured by Hussain, who was killed in the Battle of Karbala along with 72 of his relatives, friends and supporters. They also carried Tazia, which is a miniature replica of the tomb of Imam Hussain. Look, me, Prophet Muhammad hai. प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद की जो नवासे हैं आज के दिन शहीद हो गए थे और उनका पूरा कुनबा शहीद हो गया था छह महीने से बच्चे से लेके 72 इयर्स के एज के जो बूढ़े थे वो तक शहीद हो गए थे उनको जिस कदर इतनी बेरहमी से शहीद किया गया वो कोई जंग नहीं थी वो सिर्फ इमाम हुसैन अलैहिस्सलाम बताना चाहते थे अच्छाई और बुराई में फर्क Similar scenes were witnessed in northern Lucknow city where devotees carried decorated tazia in processions to a cemetery where they buried to commemorate the day of the morning. ये समझ लीजिए इतना जोश था पब्लिक के दो साल से जुलूस नहीं उठा था पब्लिक बहुत ज़्यादा परेशान थी कि हमारे मौला का काम कोई हो नहीं पा रहा हैगा बहुत ज़्यादा ही मतलब हर साल ये हो रहा था तो अब क्यों उठाए तो अब क्यों जोश ज़्यादा है पब्लिक में 
Muharram, a time of mourning, is one of the holiest months for the Muslim community. The 10-day long mourning period ends with Ashura. The event is central to the split between Sunnis and Shiite Muslims and marked by Shiites around the world with weeping and prayer. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.